Welcome to Gold Derby's reality nonfiction group panel for the 2023 Emmy Awards. We would like to welcome back David Brindley for The Reluctant Traveler, Michael Williams for Gentle Art of Swedish Death Cleaning, Chad Mum for Full Swing, and Clay Newbill for Shark Tank. Uh, for this first round table question, I'd love to know why you think unscripted and reality TV connects with viewers at home so much. The genre is so incredibly popular and it's only getting bigger and bigger, you know, through the years. Uh, Chad, I'll start with you for this one. Yeah, you know, I think if we'd uh, turned in a script for the season of Full Swing that we got, uh, the real life script, it would have been thrown back in our face for being too unrealistic. And, you know, it's a trope that real life is stranger than fiction, but, you know, we just lived it for an entire year and our cameras captured everything. And I think that that's what makes unscripted documentaries and reality interesting is you get, you know, sometimes real life really is more interesting and more exciting and, and kind of crazier than you could ever dream up. And Clay? Yeah, I, I was going to say the same thing. I uh, Years ago, I worked for Bunim and Murray. Uh, I uh, did the second and third season of Real World and then helped create and produce and directed uh, Road Rules for several years for MTV, for Bunim and Murray. And I remember a particular moment, you know, to uh, that we were driving in the Winnebago. It was nighttime and late at night, and we were on our way to some... I don't, I can't remember where we were going, but we, there was a thump on the windshield and uh, Carlos Los was driving and he's like, what's that? And he turned on the windshield wipers and the windshield wipers started going back and forth. And he goes, it's a bat, man. <laughs> right. And he was right. It was a bat had smacked into our windshield and we pulled over because he couldn't get it off. The bat unfortunately had perished in the impact, but the cast comes out and just on their own at that very moment decides that they're going to bury this bat. So they, they get some gloves, they take the bat out, they dig on the side of the road. We're out in the middle of nowhere, probably a desert or something. They dig on the side of the road, they bury the bat, they say a few words, they get back into the Winnebago and we keep on going. And myself and my, my uh, ca uh, camera operator at the time, we turn to each other afterwards and like, you know, you just, that stuff, you would never write that right? It would never have, you would never believe that that just happened and what the reaction was and what was said afterwards and the barrier, the whole thing. And it's just at that moment, it's, it just really hit that, that life is, is real life is better than anything you can write, I think, in, mm. in many, many, uh, in many, many cases. And I think that's why people, you know, when it's authentic and when it's real, it just connects with people. And how about you, Michael? Uh, with with our show, it's it's so relatable. Everyone has a story. Anyone over the past year that I've told what I'm working on, oh, I could have used you last year. You know, so and so passed away, or oh, I've been uh, cleaning out my grandparents' stuff for years. Or my garage unit, my garage is full. Everyone has that story, and even in when the show just premiered two weeks ago. But all the comments, they're not commenting on the quality of the show. Everyone was telling their story. All the comments were, oh, when this happened to me, I did this. And everyone was related to it. So that's why people just relate to it. And it wakes them up. They're, oh, my God, that happened to me. I have to do this. It's OK to throw away something mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's just sitting somewhere collecting dust. But I, I, that's what reality is about the, the fantasy world of watching shows like Shark Tank's one of my favorite shows. I've watched it for years and years and years. And I just like, I had a great idea. I had a great idea for uh, um, kettle, baked, kettle potato chips 25 years ago. And I'm like, why did I follow up with that deal? Where was Shark Tank back then? Um, you know, uh, but anyway, I, you just relate to those people and see how the, the spark in people's eyes. And of course, this weekend, I'm going to binge watch the Eugene Levy show. I love him and I love travel. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. and my okay. daughter will watch, I'm going to make my daughter, who's also in eighth grade, watch uh, Full Swing. <laughs> uh, David, what about you? Why do you, why do you think reality TV and, and unscripted connects with viewers so much? 
Uh, yeah, I suppose building a bit on what Michael said there about sort of recognizing yourselves. I think I think you know, uh, unscripted, it sort of holds a mirror up to us, doesn't it? And we like that. Whether that's um, whether that's because it's emotional and uh, or whether that's because it's hilarious or funny or moving, or we can all re- we can all relate to that person that you're seeing in it, you know, on screen because they're real. And uh, and whether or not uh, it's it's interesting with the with the Eugene show, we have a lot of people say. Oh my gosh! Finally, there's someone on screen who who feels the same way about travel that I do. Not like not like all the other travel presenters who are loving every moment of everything. Yeah. Uh, but equally, there's people who are like, I can't believe. You know, I'm the complete opposite of Eugene. But the fact you have, you know, in in all of these shows, you have you have people on screen who um uh, who who obviously are real. They're talking about real lives, and and you you recognise either a part of yourself, a lot of yourself, or none of yourself in in those people, and so you immediately have. A connection i mean i love i love scripted shows and i love uh, you know falling into them and escaping into them and uh, and uh, but they but they do a different job but there's 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 a there's a power in the, the the act of having a camera and putting it in front of someone and have someone tell your story which is really really transformative and really immediate and and can be really intimate and that that's the thing i suppose that we all, we all get really excited about don't we at those moments when you're filming something and someone's telling you something or you're watching a moment happen and and it's authentic and it's really happening and like you've all said it's better than anybody could possibly write mm-hmm. uh, all of your shows do not have scripts so i'm curious how important is the picture editor in, in this process because it, how does the editor have to form the stories and form the character developments you know what would you how would you do it without them basically uh how about you uh, david uh, i think they're completely and utterly integral i mean certainly on our show but also in my experience of un, uh, in, in non-scripted um i think that that's you know structuring those stories uh and and um, we we're all about we're all we're all storytellers, right? So and so so crafting and building a story and finding the right narrative arc and 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 having the right music at the right moment or ha- knowing when to breathe at the right moment and actually have nothing is is an incredible art form. And the and 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 I, I think the difference between a you know and you could have the same rushes and the difference between an absolutely stellar you know Emmy award winning show and one that's pretty good. It is often down to that editor, you know, who who can just who can just sort of, uh, you know, t- take that material and spin it into something which is, you know, really really hilarious or beautiful or or moving and and so I'd say they're you know uh, they're, they're right at the top of the tree of you know of that of that team that are, are creating mm-hmm. the story. Mm-hmm. And you're not in clay. Yeah, I, I agree. I think the um, the story producers. Uh, the editors and finding the moments and it's crafting so much of well so much of shark tank is done and what we say is nuance right it's the reaction it's the close-up it's the music cue it's the the sound effect you know it's it's building those stories and telling those stories and they're absolutely for for our show and but just not shark tank but all the shows i've ever been involved in when i've in, in reality television it's those story people that do an incredible job. And, and I, I do want to agree with David. I'm not, I am a huge fan of scripted shows and scripted films and stories and books, but I, you know, I think that, uh, and I want to go on record with that, um, particularly now with the strike that's taking place, you know, support these people. To, I, I'm not, you know, some people have been saying that um, it's, it's good for people in reality. I don't think it's good for anybody, frankly. I don't want to see anybody out of a job particularly not now with with everything that's been going on in, in our economy, et cetera. Um, and I certainly uh, appreciate their work and I'm a big fan of it and watch it all the time. But I do think that there's something that connects with people about just having an average person that's, that could be me or my neighbor yeah. that you know suddenly has this moment on reality television. I think that, I don't think that either form is ever gonna go go away. I think they're, they're always gonna complement each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, Michael? No, the editors and story producers make or break a show, especially in a first season. We were doing first season, we're out in the field, we hadn't tried and true, and we started putting it together. And I must admit, it's the editor. I've always found you find editors who aren't just doing it because it's a job. You find the editors who just really love the idea of the show that you're doing. 
Mm-hmm. And in the first few episodes, we were in screenings and just laughing and thinking they were great. And then later on, that we were like, what happened? Oh, oh we switched editors. I'm like, why? And we're, it, it lost all this stuff. So it's just having the producers in and it's hard. And I must admit, after, after the end of that season and another show too, it's like, you get what you pay for. Don't try to get cheap editors. <laughs> editors to keep in a, a line in a budget if someone says i get this much money i did another show that we ended up bringing a, a finish editor in that cost a fortune but turn the show around completely hmm. and you know because they were passionate about it and they just wanted to dive in and, and dig mm-hmm. and i've had editors sometimes they're just doing it as a makeover show it's standard uh but you, this had, had more heart to it and they, they found it so do you have, do you have that number, Michael? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Chad, what about you? Yeah, you know, so for our series, we interview the athletes first without cameras. And the first time we ever, you know, get them in a chair. Because if you've ever been around pro athletes, you put a camera in their face, you put up the lights, they kind of go into media training mode. They're used to having cameras in their faces after a round or, you know, at a press conference. And they just kind of go back to the same couple of talking points. So when we started Full Swing, we sat down with these athletes for the first time. You know, we did them all sort of 20 interviews in like two days and happened to be at the Bahamas because there's a tournament there. It's a lot of real rough life traveling for the series. Um, But we brought them into a recording studio and we like told them not to come in golf clothes, put a mic on them and just sat and chatted. And it was like almost like a podcast and you could just see them open up as you, you know, they didn't feel the pressure of the cameras in their face. And we wanted to know about sort of who they were and what their goals were, what relationships mattered. It wasn't about their golf round. It wasn't what shot they hit on 17. It was like very refreshing for them, I think, to, to actually try to get to the heart of who they were and sort of what mattered to them. And, and so we used those audio interviews to basically write out what we thought a, a narrative arc would be for this character. And essentially the act of the show is to like essentially tell that story back to them. Because in most cases, what they were worried about was the thing that impacted them. It was the thing that happened. The, the, the tournaments they were excited about, they ended up winning. Or, you know, if they didn't, they were heartbroken about it. It just, it became a framework. And then when you think about the role of our editors, you know, we had like story beats written out, you know, as this, and, and it's a long shoot. We shot, you know, 300 days last year on the, on the road on the PGA Tour, and, you know, across the world. It's the opposite of how you do most shows where you're thinking about like, trying to minimize the hour shot versus final screen time. And this was like, throw that out the window. It was more about creating memories and then coming back to those in the, in the editing process and tying them together into the story. But so we had these, like, we had this idea for what these narratives would be. We had it kind of plotted out and then to get back and sit through the first edit and look at the first rough cut and just watch it come to life on the screen, just to see the drama elevated so much by sight, sound and motion and really creative choices. It, it just like blows you away. And I, I'll never forget my, I think my favorite episode is our, is our fifth episode about Matt Fitzpatrick uh, who wins the U S open. And he's kind of an underdog story. In many ways that episode, you could teach a screenwriting class about the narrative arc of that episode. It's like, it's literally like how you would diagram it, what mm-hmm. he goes through the setbacks he sees, you know, his the villain he's up against or just at least the mountain he has to climb. Uh, and then the payoff in the moment, you know, and the first time we saw it, it's, it's, probably one of the best shots in U.S. Open history to win the tournament out of a bunker on the last hole of the tournament. It's dramatic. It's dark. It's kind of like cloudy. It's in Boston. People are chirping him the whole time. And he hits this amazing shot. It was incredible to watch on TV, but then to see it the first time on camera and to see the reaction of his family who was watching it with their mics on and to see how intense he was, but how stressed they were. And you could just feel all of the stress had been sort of put onto the family, like off of him because he was there to do a job. And to, to watch it come to life, I mean, I still get chills thinking about it. And, and we saw it the first time. And our amazing editor, had, you know, we had some, our composer had composed for that moment. And it was sort of like the end of a sports movie. It was just this big celebratory mm-hmm. track. And we were all kind of set back. And we're like, God, it's not quite right. We gave like a really bunch of jumbled notes to the editor. We're like, we just wanted to feel like release. Like this feeling of not like celebration, but actually just like you've worked your whole entire life every single day tirelessly to get to this moment. And it's finally happened. The feeling is like, oh, thank God, it's over, you know? And, and so the editor's like, I got you, right? So like 24 hours comes back, sends us a, a new cut of that scene. He's like, what do you think of this? And he put this Bon Iver song in there. And it was just perfect. Like just uh, everyone in the room, electric chills, 
coursing through as you watch the scene in this perfect track and this perfect song and you're like the the brilliance of like going to that track and then we had to go get the bon Air song wasn't really planning for it <laughs> at that moment but you know it just is amazing like you know the creativity the talent like to to take so much of for us which was almost 750 hours of footage of originally shot footage and six thousand hours of archive to turn that into six hours of television you know you got some damn good editors hmm. well thank you so much everyone i learned so much and i had such a pleasure watching all of your shows i cannot wait to see the upcoming seasons of all of them and best of luck at the upcoming emmy awards as well have a great thank day you very everyone. much thank yeah. you marcus yeah. thanks everybody